Okay, okay, okay. Get you some tea. Listen in. I got my tea. I know you hear it. And I got proof. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, I got proof. Listen, your pen, listen, and I got me some tea. I got me some ginger tea. And I pray that you're listening. God is talking today. You know, I began to pray and ask God several different things about how to approach this message. You know, I played this song on one of my YouTube years ago, and I never forget somebody texted me and said, not text me, emailed me and said, oh, that is not of God. Really, we want all saved, always. And anybody that's listening to me now, whatever you're thinking, think about what you're thinking, because I believe that this song really, really tells a lot about where we are, you know, about this familiar thing that I want to talk about in just a few minutes, because many of us are familiar with the world sitting straight up in the church, and many of us are still doing a whole bunch of things that are smiling faces, carnal things that we call ourselves saints and ready remnant. I don't want to preach. Mm. But anyway, let me get down to the meat of this matter because I want to get off. I want to let's start out. <clears throat> We're talking about this upcoming event that I have that I believe that God wants me to tell you now. So get a pen, write it down. I pray that you're able to attend. It's going to be this Saturday, the 16th of December. It's going to be on the calls that we normally do the second and third uh, Saturday of the month. And so the 16th, we're going to be there talking in a real, real candid way, pretty much about some things that you got to get familiar with right now that somebody is familiar with you that should not be. And they got a lot of honey talking going on. Many of you have really talked and shared about your pivot where God has taken you for 24. And many of you have already pivoted without change. I don't want to preach. So warning, you can never pivot without change. Change and growth is two different things. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. But I want to talk about that on the 16th. And I want to let you know that God wants to talk to you about those who are preaching. You're going to have to shift your voice to teaching. This is the hour we got to think about, Matthew 28. We're in the hour to teach and create disciples, okay? You are all who have been baptized and teaching in any facet. We are teacher practitioners, and many of us are teaching, but you ain't practicing nothing. I don't want to preach. Let's talk about this area that's going to be, this particular part that's going to be going on on the 16th, I'm going to be talking about preparing for funding for those that are just getting into ministry, those that are just trying to learn how to get themselves together to get their uh, ministry or their business funded. I want to talk to you about getting some local money, how you can work on getting that money, and how God really wants to talk to you about preparing yourself to get the money, okay? God wants to fund you, but you've got to be prepared. So I'm going to talk about those elements. I'm going to be talking about five W's and three H's and give you some keys to prepare yourself. That's going to be requirements. You even Somebody even more think about giving you any money, okay? But the most important part I think is going to be a part of that day is part one that... Uh, Prophet Thornton is going to be teaching us, Prophet Roger Thornton, he's been one of the teachers, he's going to be teaching us on the high bite spirit. You don't want to miss that because many of us are thinking about different things but don't realize that we've been comforting our soulish realm. We have been comfortable way too long. So we're going to talk about that. You don't want to miss him going over that about the high bite spirit. You've got to recognize these notional spirits that's giving you these vain thoughts like you're even thinking right now, like really smiling faces, yes. This area I want you to pay close attention to. All right. So that is the 16th, 7 o'clock a.m. Central Time. It's dial in and you just were calling that number. There's no passcode 
7.457. We start at 7 o'clock a.m. Central Time, and we are there two hours. So, therefore, you can come in and out as you choose, but you don't want to miss what you really need to be getting. Many of you are trying to pivot, but you ain't made no change. Once again, okay, so I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk to you about getting yourself prepared. Now, let's just jump into this real, real fast. You know, I want to give you some uh, resources that you can go to, too, as I'm talking about this message right here. I don't know if I'm going to get through with all of it, but I want to talk to you about some of us are in this uh, vein of trying to teach, but we're not prepared. Some of us are trying to create disciples, but we're not prepared. So I want to share about that difference between teaching and giving a whole lot, people getting a whole lot of knowledge, but they have no understanding. They have no anointing. They just have a lot of head knowledge. And so we want to talk about that, getting in the knowledge with no understanding and no anointing. It's very, very important. Resource I want to give you concerning this message today is about discerning. Discerning undercover sap suckers. I want you to write that one down. All these books are mine, and you can get them on Amazon.com under Dr. Sandy Murphy. And so friendly witchery is very important. Get that one. Choose whichever one you want to get, but I'm just giving you something to consider beyond the one I'm talking out of that I have been doing these series on. I'm on part two of this series out of my book, Chocolate Covered Flattery. Okay, I'm doing part two of this series, what I'm talking about right now. But friendly witch is very important. And then demons are on assignment. Who's covering you? Okay, demons are on assignment. Who's covering you? Now, I want to jump right on to this message because there's something I want to ask you a couple of questions at the end of this because I got to get ready to get off of here. But I want to talk to you about this familiar word. Look at it very, very closely. Look at it because, you know, when we're familiar with somebody, well, I hate to say it, but a lot of us got some evil intentions. Those people that are familiar with us, you know, like the song says, smiling faces. Sometimes pretend to be your friend, smiling faces. You know, it shows no traces of the evil that lurks within. And it's really, really true. You know, right in the Christian, they want to pay attention to these last four letters in this word familiar. If you look at it, it's liar. OK, L-I-A-R. And so this tells a lot about some of the smiling faces. They're very manipulative. They're very deceptive liars. And many of them are up close and many of them are relatives. Many of them are friends. Many of them you may be dating, married even. You know, they're often there with you. They talk to you a lot. They're simply with you because or they heard about you. They well know. Be careful what you're thinking about me right now. I think be careful, be careful. I'll tell you about thoughts and things that people say about people. One thing I learned out of maturity I learned that you better watch your mouth because the very fruit of your lips, you shall eat that. And the very thought and the intent that you have, that very thing that you will follow into your own self. So be very, very careful. We, I'm here to try to teach you something. Wisdom is speaking. Wisdom is speaking to you. It's better that you never had clicked on this. I'm just going to keep it real. And I ain't been doing this this long to look for no likes. I'm trying to take somebody out of the fire. Amen. So let's look at this part right here about when we're talking about this person that may know you well known and be careful of these gifts that y'all get ready to get for these holidays. Be very, very careful of these gifts and people that you got connected to you, especially in the intimate setting, okay? People that you're doing business with, people that you're doing ministry with, people that you're associated with or have a companionship with, whatever kind that is. But this honey talking, oh my God, I got to get off of here. This honey talker, this honey talker is it's what the song was talking about, the evil that lurks within. This honey talker is described a person who has this real sweet voice. They know how to talk real gentle and loving. And they just want to let you know how much I care about you. And you're just so wonderful. You know, many times they're not sincere. Many times they are familiar spirits, familiar with you. And they want to do something to give you the chocolate cover flattery. Don't forget to give my book. I'm telling you again, am I promoting them? You bet I am. I'm promoting so you can get an understanding of what God is trying to get us to see from experience over 50 plus years God has used me. On, on page 28, I says, as I grew older, I learned that my eyes could hear almost greater than my ears. I still never, it ne still never ceased to amaze me that I can see in the natural spiritually greater than with my natural eyes. I can hear the angry or deceptive heart as I am in the presence of people. And depending on the situation, I can hear their heart even when the person is absent from my presence. Now, I believe to God be the glory that he's anointed me in this area for whatever reason. And I believe that many times people don't like to be around people like that. But to God be the glory, I believe that whatever he would have me to do, 
I believe it's going to always bring him glory and touch someone who needs to recognize change needs to happen now. So I'm going to get ready, prepared to share a couple other things with you before I ask you a couple of questions before I get off of here. And I pray that you will share this message because I believe that God is talking to you for the pivot of relationship right now. I know I'm talking to you. The warning for the pivot of your relationship, the change, because you're trying to do something new, but you still got these old friends, old relationships, and people just, you know, should have been gone a long time ago, but you're looking for something out of them that they cannot give you. I know I'm talking to you. Think about what I just said in that word, familiar. They know you. They know what you want. They know what you like, okay, because they studied you. This is what this particular chocolate cover flattery does. It wants to flatter you to get you to do and see and say what they want they have a sweet and gentle way of getting oh well you know i was just checking on you i just really care about you you know you know i know let me tell you about so many things i know that god want me to do with you and we're going to see how you allow me to help you and this is what they do but listen to me some gonna talk a good talk some gonna even quote scriptures but many are not coming with wisdom, okay? Many are not coming with discipline. And I'm going to get into that on the 16th. So please be there at 7 o'clock a.m. Central Time so you can see what could be holding you up in this area of familiar because it's when it starts to date these honey talkers, is a trap. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of these things that you need to consider. I've already given you the books to consider, but I want to ask you these particular four questions before I get off of here. Some of the things I want you to look at for these warning signs is, are they looking at you in an exaggeration? Okay, things that they want to constantly compliment you about. They use this tactic to manipulate you. Number two, are you paying attention to the timing when they're calling you, when they're asking you things? Are you paying attention to the things that they want to influence you to make a decision about? That's number two, okay? This is only going to occur when they want to get something out of you. Number three, be aware of the context of how they're doing this. It's very inappropriate. It's very disrespectful. And they're using the tactic to get you to draw closer so they can get you to manipulate you. Number four, you need to look for the ulterior motive. Many of you don't look for the motive. You look to see what you can get out of the thing. And this is the reason why a lot of you are trapped in dating familiar spirits. And that's exactly what they are. Think about the familiarity that they have with you. Think about the honey talking that they're doing with you so God can let you see that you need to look closer at the motive. They always got a motive. When I say on, on page 29 of my book here of talking about flattery, I said here, it said believers who many times are seduced by these principalities are unaware and are spiritually ignorant of their stronghold. I said back in my time, this flattery principality was also known as a kiss up or a person who is seeking brownie points to get to do something or get something they wanted from a person. OK, I said it's really a cunning political spirit. And these principalities work undercover even the more as we advance in ministries. These evil spirits regret how the favor of the Lord begins to swing open doors for you that they try to flatter their way into and or try their best to block you from going through them. Listen to me. The flattery is likened to Jezebel, Ahab, Athaliah. Delilah and Absalom spirits is what I'm saying in the book here. These are not demons. These spirits of flattery along with these evil spirits is a contending warring principality that strives against the anointing and call on leadership and ministries. And my goal for this message is to open your eyes to see that the last day principality that flows through this spirit because it flows through usurping authority and dismantling kingdom order it's more Jezebelic than anything. It's more narcissistic than anything. And most of the time, namely, it, befit, it befits what it flows in. It flows in control. It flows in confusion. It flows in manipulation. It flows in familiarity with you or where God is already planning for you to go. You need to get the book. I don't want to go no more in that. I pray that God will speak to your heart for you to get an understanding because I got to get ready to go. I supposed to been off here five minutes ago. But I want to give you number five in these 
watch for the attempts to create dependency. They want to make sure that whatever you think that you that you got that they that they got that they know they really don't have that they don't even qualify to even give you anything. They want to attempt you to create a dependency on them. They want to manipulate you by constantly praising you about where you're going to go and what you're going to get. They want to sit you in an order of control of their manipulation. That's their tactic. Number six, they want you to look for the inconsistencies of what I mean, they're going to look for your inconsistencies, not you look, they look, they're going to look for your inconsistencies to see if they can manipulate you through the flattery because they're familiar with you. Number seven, you need to think, make sure that you're aware of the emotional manipulation to get you to feel like they're going to try to help you. They want you to feel like this is something that if you don't do it or don't let them, that you're being rebellious or that you, they're trying to make you feel guilty or obligated to do something. Think about it. It's all manipulation. It's all familiar. Number eight, you got to look at it when you're very suspicious about what they're saying. Think about their character. Many times their character flows from the fruit of who they are. That's all you got to remember. Watch the fruit. Normally, they're very complimentary. Normally, they're suddenly showing up. They want to give you praise all of a sudden. They want to make sure that they give you gifts and things like that. Or want to say they're trying to say something the Lord has told them, and it ain't nothing but deception. And like I said before, I the word familiar, they are a liar. Number nine, pay attention to your feelings. Where are you weak at emotionally? What is the devil trying to get you trapped with? What's making you feel uncomfortable? what's making you feel uneasy what's making you feel like it's something that you need to hurry up and do and if you don't you're going to miss something that lets you know that you've already been duped in the okie doke of the smiling face familiar dating that's where it's at familiar spirit dating of the honey talking number nine or number ten you need to trust your instincts. That means you trust Holy Spirit. That means God is trying to show you something that may feel good, but it is nothing but a smiling face and a lie trying to get you to be manipulated and moved into what they want. I got to get off here. I saw the been going off here. Remember, please don't make no pivots. Please don't make no change. I mean, please don't make no moves. You ain't made no change. You need to think about what you change you to be before 24. Here's the questions I have for you. Are you really being quiet? Number one, are you really being quiet? Number two, are you really listening? Number three, are you really watching? Number four, what do you see? I don't want to breathe. Number five, what do you hear? Now, if you have these five, I want you to say like this. What are you thinking right now about what you just heard? You know you were not always saved. Some of you still might not even be saved even now. You just have a good form of it. I know you ain't liking this message, so you should have never listened to it. Because it doesn't matter if you thumb up or thumb down or whatever you say, because I'm not going away. But listen to me. What are you thinking about right now that's holding you up that could be holding you up even now before 24? Father, I pray that they're hearing what Jeremiah 17 and 10 says. I, the Lord, search the heart and I examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. And we thank God. According to 1 Corinthians 3, 13 and 14, it says that you're going to reward us, Daddy. And we're in expectation of something good. So we bind up every spirit that tries to hinder now. We bind up every spirit that tries to be cunning and manipulative. We bind up every lying demon and every principality and power that may try to come against that when it's trying to go forward before 24. And I decree even now the fire of the Holy Ghost. Even now, we thank you, Father, that the fire would test the quality of every man's work you said in your word. And if what he has built survives. He receives his reward. I'm warning you, remember, the familiar is trying to date the honey talker. And don't forget, in the word familiar, it clearly means you could be talking to a liar. Mm, Selah.